welcome to audio addiction if you see this guy before it's a familiar face and he can say his name and uh what he does in the band and his band name of course uh hey guys my name is nigel um i play bass keyboards and do programming um in my solo project which is called actius luna awesome awesome so my first question nigel obviously you're no stranger to this channel like how did you go about doing your solo stuff like what was the process behind that and um you know who were some of the like bands or people you're inspired by to do the solo record okay so um about like a little over a year ago um because i was initially living in texas uh, for, for a while and uh, i was with my old band chronologist there and then you know just in terms of like money and employment and stuff i couldn't really make texas work so i moved back home to vancouver canada and then, um, so pretty much I was just really craving uh, writing music and just making music again. So then I was like, hey, what if I kind of do my own thing? And then at first I wanted to kind of write, um, I'm really into like David Max and Mitzich and like the Destiny Potato stuff. Yeah. So I was trying to do that kind of sound initially. I was trying to like write, you know, guitar parts and like do the big orchestration and stuff. But like, couldn't get it to work. Like I couldn't get my stuff to sound good. You know, I even tried like sampling guitars and it didn't really, didn't really work out. So I was kind of like frustrated, and then one day I was just kind of like, what if I kind of just do what I'm good at? And I was like, okay, I play bass, <laughs> and I do a lot of like cinematic, like MIDI orchestration stuff. So I was like, what if I just do that? Uh, what if I just like play bass with my kind of orchestral stuff? And that's kind of the uh, the essence behind the project, Actius Luna. Um, the name, um, it's actually a, re a reflection song. I don't know if you know, if you know that song, but... Yes, it's, it's the reflection, the yeah. Okay, so yeah, just like the vibe of it felt really good. Um, there wasn't like a particular like like intent behind it, but it just like it just felt really right for it. So I was like, let's just go with that, awesome. and that's kind of how that started. Awesome. Like, so did you did you ever think like I know obviously I mentioned you mentioned the chronologist. Did you ever think like oh should I kind of do another band like you know in the Vancouver area? Just have like you know, reach out to other people, or did you really just mainly want to do it as, like, a solo project where, you know, it's, like, it's your baby, like, I, I get that as, like, running a channel, so I totally would get why you would want to do it that way, but have you, have you considered, like, having a band and doing this sort of stuff live, you know, in that area? Um, I thought about it, too. Um, I think, like, for me, in the time being, I just really wanted to try it out to do it myself, just because I feel like, I had a lot of ideas that would be hard to execute in a band setting and it's just it's just stuff that I wanted to try out on my own and like it is kind of like a weird combination of you know keys and like bass and no guitars and strings and stuff right so a lot of it was really about just kind of like trying stuff out and I felt like that was a lot easier to do just by myself as opposed to having to kind of like talk it over with other people um I do work with like other people on this record like I got um Devin from Save Us From The Archon to play drums on this record and he absolutely killed it I also got Adam Bentley from Arch Echo to do the mix and master on it. So I do work with other people in areas that I can't do by myself. But I, I thought in terms of like the writing and like conception behind the, the music, I wanted to do it like on my own essentially. Awesome, awesome. And how, how long was that process of like when you were coming up with tracks and like, you know, just how that goes? Because uh, I've always find it interesting when I have like people who do solo stuff like you know how long it takes from like the start of the project to like obviously you're getting close to the end of the project and like being releasing it so uh, so how does that how has that process been and like obviously you know how you work because you know yourself but like how was that and uh, you know obviously like you mentioned you work with a few other people on the record so how'd that go? Um, so I think I, I wrote the first riff on this thing, like, I think it was around last July. Okay. So, and um, the thing was, it was done, like, late May this year, like, after mixing and mastering. So the entire process was probably about 10 months. Um, I think it could have gone faster, but, like, for me, um, for work, it was really busy around, like, December, November and stuff. So I really didn't do too much during those months. Um, yeah, but um, I think for, uh, let's see, I sent, I sent, like, uh, tabs and tracks to Devin for drum tracking back in like February and then uh, we kind of went back and forth and stuff and then um, you know like th like we kind of just like worked on it over like a, a co the course of probably a month and a half I'd say if I remember correctly it's a lot of like back and forth and just massaging it and then um, yeah and I, th I think Adam uh, he worked on it over a course of 
I don't know how I don't know like when he actually like how much he actually spent working on it time wise, but like I think it was over the course of like a couple of weeks. So it was good. Uh, it's cool like working with people remotely on this kind of stuff. Um, like communicating, it's a little different because you have to like kind of talk through you know like messenger and stuff like that, and it's always hard to convey exactly what you mean through purely text. But like it's a really cool learning process, and it's all about like I think for me, I'm I'm a, I'm a bit of a control freak at times too. So it's nice to learn how to, like, let go of certain, you know, creative aspects and just let them, like, be the artist they are, you know, as a mixing engineer and as a drummer. And, like, yeah, so I think it was a really cool experience overall for sure. I totally get you on that, like, whole, like, I, I got to be, like, self-controlling. I feel like that's yeah. very much in this whole sort of thing. It's like, you know, I feel like you're, like, and I can totally kind of like parallel that to this channel. It's like, you know, mm. you only like, you know what you want out of it. And like, you're the only one who can kind of like visualize and like interpret how things will go, not like somebody else. But it's, it's always interesting to have that like play off of like how, you know, especially for music, just how mm -hmm. it would play off with other people. And, you know, I'm glad it worked out well because Save Us from the Archon is really great. Um, yeah. And Art Jack is a phenomenal band too so uh that was cool and just like i always think it's interesting you know that especially for what you do is like just having a more bass driven like music because obviously everybody like when they think of like music they're like oh guitar or like drums or something like that but like i always feel like bass gets like the second hand of everything <laughs> else so i think it's cool that it's more that you're kind of bringing it more to the forefront and like you know having it be its own thing because like I, I always find that interesting you know not only what you do but just like when bass players have their own kind of like flavor to what they do <laughs> thanks man and yeah i think it's just like people are naturally drawn to like higher frequencies and melodies and stuff right it's kind of just like the nature of how people hear things so it's not like you know i don't really feel like i don't really feel down about it but it's just kind of like how people listen to stuff right so i was kind of like f trying to figure out a way where um i could kind of like bring the bass to the forefront but instead of like trying to like do everything with the bass too because i do do a lot of stuff with like strings and keys and that kind of stuff so there's a delicate balance of like doing enough where it's in the forefront but not doing too much where it gets really like monotonous and boring awesome and then like to kind of play off of where you're saying like more of the more orchestral stuff like who inspired you to do that sort of side of of the music and like you know like who were you who are you kind of listening to at the time of like recording this over that you know many months span that really got you into it obviously you named david maximit million i don't even know how to pronounce his name but just his his stuff like you know yeah was what were some of the like artists that got you inspired to do this um so i grew up playing uh classical piano oh sick um okay. and so i think um like growing up my favorite uh pieces to play were like 19th century romantic era pieces um like i really like wagner stuff um i like franz Liszt a lot so I think a lot of the, like, harmonies I use is really inspired by kind of, like, romantic era harmony. And um, I also love a lot of, like, video game soundtracks. Um, so, like, the JRPG stuff, you know, like, Yoko Shimomura with, you know, the Final Fantasy stuff, um, Kingdom Hearts, right, uh, Yuematsu, that kind of stuff. Um, so I think a lot of the melodies are inspired by kind of that JRPG uh, soundtrack scene. And, yeah, and I also, like, I studied film scoring at Berkeley, so... Um, cool that was where I was exposed to a lot of more like film music and I think yeah just like a bunch of different factors really influenced that part of it that's so cool and like I, I also like you know I, I've watched some of like the videos that you post on like your Facebook page and then I thought something was really interesting and that you did kind of like this two-handed technique on the bass where I you uh. know, I feel like a lot of like guitar players do it now uh, especially in that like sort of math rock sort of yeah <laughs> um, I always thought that that was interesting and I like how you transpose it onto bass like I think it just brings another kind of like flavor or like level to like bass um so i definitely wanted to point that out um were you kind of inspired um in that sort of math rock genre like bands like covet like that sort of sort of you know genre of music as well yeah actually like um like playing off what you just said i actually like covet is actually like a huge part of how i conceptualize the riffs i wrote so like when i first started writing this kind of stuff i really didn't think about what i was writing it was more like okay what sounded good and then, like, by the third song, so, um, 
I was I was like kind of like listening to Covet and like analyzing how they make their band work, right? So essentially, the way I broke it down in my head was that they're they have kind of like three main musical elements. They have essentially their bass line. Like this is like just just my conception of <laughs> categorizing things, but you know they have Dave holding down the bass line, yeah. and then essentially like Yvette kind of plays the role of both a lead guitarist. And a rhythm guitarist, in my opinion. She does like the mid range stuff as well as the melodies and stuff. So I was like, okay, there's kind of these three things in that music. What if I took on the role of like the bass line and the rhythm guitar, but left the melodies to like orchestral instruments? And so that was kind of how I wrote a lot of like my later riffs that were more like chordal and like a lot more arpeggios and that kind of stuff. Um, so like it wasn't like, it, it wasn't like um, I was really trying to like emulate. Like like note for note, what a lot of math rock guys are doing, but um, I think the concept of like covet and like tapping really inspired me in terms of like how I write stuff and how I think of the functions of what I write. If yeah. if that makes sense. No, absolutely, and that was something that like I, I was kind of drawing parallels to with like just visualizing it because obviously music mm. is very much you know like in your ears, but like it's cool yeah. to kind of see it and then then visualize like how you're playing it and like. You know, I'm not a bass player, so I mean, I can't, I'm not like, you know, in that technical realm, but, you know, I can understand it from a guitarist perspective because it's like, okay, well, he's taking, you know, the, like you said, you're taking the rhythm and the bass tones from, you know, that sort of style of things and then allowing the more orchestral pieces to play off that more lead appropriate mm -hmm. you know stuff and i think that you know for anybody who's kind of been like oh i don't know if i feel about this bass like this whole bass <laughs> thing i think you should definitely give it a listen give it a try because like personally like i always think that instrumental music is like an acquired taste for sure because it's like you have to you have to imagine a song without any vocals in it and so i think that it i feel like a lot of people that especially people who play music i feel like find more appreciation for it as opposed to like if you're listening to like top 40s or like something on the radio where it's always singing um i would just you know i would say take the time to listen to it if you're like into that sort of you know instrumental like intervals plenty that sort of stuff where you know they kind of take that element of vocals and make it more al aligned to like an instrument i think that you know nigel does a great job of that and he didn't pay me to say that at all thank I think you really i think it's really interesting and just the way he conceptualized the more bass tones i think you guys will definitely dig it um another band that i thought was kind of in that alley of what you are creating is Omnirific, the band from Australia with like the two yes. players. I was like, okay, he's kind of doing that thing, but maybe like on one bass, which is even cooler. <laughs> but uh, definitely go check out his stuff. Um, were there any like, you know, for like future releases, would, are there any like artists that you would love to like collaborate with, you know, like on a future, you know, piece of music or, you know, EP or something like that? Um, I think just like off the top of my head, you know, David Max admits it, right? Like he's like my favorite musician probably on the earth, right? So like, of course, you know, any capacity, love to work with him. Um, also just like, I think like Yvette from Covet would be really cool. Like either for a solo stuff or for Covet stuff, it'd be really cool to either just do some like bass stuff or like additional production for it. Like that'd be really fantastic. Um, another artist I've been really digging recently is uh, Sarah Longfield. Yeah, yes. Yeah, fine constant. Like I really like like the stuff she writes, so that'd be really cool. And then um I think like yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh sorry, I just got a text. Uh yeah. <laughs> Should put put that over there for now. <laughs> and yeah, just a lot of like would you ever take the approach of like having a vocalist on your track? Like, would you ever like want to go down that route? Very similar to like uh, Strawberry Girls, where they'll have like guest mm -hmm. vocals on and like they'll do their thing, but still have like you know the essence of Strawberry Girls. Would you ever consider that? Um, I think it's a possibility. I think I might be more inclined to go with like a vocoder route as opposed to full on vocals route, okay. just because like. I like the idea of kind of having the accessibility of vocals, but still maintaining the flexibility of like an instrument, essentially. So I think the vocoder is kind of like the happy middle ground for that kind of stuff. Awesome, awesome. Well, Nigel, tell them about your band, you know, where they can find you at and uh, <clears throat> anything coming up in the next couple months. 
Uh, sweet, yes. Yeah. So um, I'm on Facebook. Uh, you can look it up, Actios Luna. Um, I'm on Instagram. It's kind of like a mix of my uh, my personal stuff as well as the music stuff. So it's just Nigel underscore Actius, N-I-G-E-L underscore A-C-T-I-A-S. Um, also on YouTube, Spotify, uh, pretty much all the major platforms and stuff. I went through DistroKid, so it's kind of just um, on all of those. Awesome. Well, definitely go check out his stuff, Actius Luna. Uh, I will leave links in the description. Uh, Nigel's been on here before, as I've mentioned thousands of times, but um, this stuff I'm really interested in checking out because uh, I haven't listened to it yet, so I'm really kind of interested to delve in, and the reason why I kind of held off was because, like, you know, I always find that if I have a band on and I'll listen to the record, I have more of an appreciation from where it comes from and, like, you know, musically, mm -hmm. you know, where you drew from and where I can be like, okay, I can draw parallels to, you know, what I liked about this record and, like, you know, maybe things that I'd like to see in future releases. But uh, Nigel's been on this thing for a bit, so uh, I'm excited to have him back on again with a new project. Um, like I said, go subscribe to his YouTube channel, which will be at the end of this video. And if you enjoyed this interview, just share it around, subscribe, uh, hit that like. It goes a long way. And again, thank you to Nigel for coming on uh, once again. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. It's, it's been a lot of fun for sure. <laughs> hey, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, thanks for watching, of course. Uh, if you enjoy what we do, make sure to go check out the other series we do. We do album reviews, we do band interviews, and we do live videos, so definitely go check that out. Um, hit that subscribe button. It really helps our channel, helps us grow. Make sure to hit that like button as well. Uh, go follow us on social media. That's all down below. We try to keep that as updated as possible. We also made a new website where we'll be posting photos of upcoming concerts and stuff like that which you can go check out at audioaddictionmedia.com and come get your fix with us, guys. Talk to you later. Deuces!